Welcome to EP Live. We had a, we had yeah, two welcomes we in there. Yeah, we that's did. live, man. That's just, this is what we're doing. What's right going now. on today? We've got something really cool to talk about today. Lots of cool things. Chris Van Dyke is here. He is a visual effects artist. He is uh, part of a uh, parade of artists that are at Spark, uh, the Spark Forward uh, conference that's happening yep. in Vancouver right now. And uh, Chris was pitched to us as somebody that we should interview and talk to and put onto EP. And we said, let's get him onto EP when, Live. When you go to the movies and you're looking for movie magic, yeah. Chris is the guy who, who brings some of that magic to yeah. bear on the big screen. Let's talk a little bit about what you do exactly as, well, first of all, thanks for being here. Yes, man. Yeah, no and, worries. Uh, and, Welcome. Uh, thanks for having and me. And we understand yeah. that you have uh, an illness that's going through your house. The, oh, yeah. the same illness is going through the office. <laughs> yeah, I'm sick. suffering You're from sick. It Everybody's right. sick. Well, I was just going to say that. I have to wear this over the course yeah. of today's show. Yeah. So just <laughs> yeah. don't yeah, come near me, guys. Don't touch yeah. him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say, when you when you go to see those movies, you'll see my work, but you'll have left well before you'll see my name because it's like <laughs> always the very last. It must be exciting. It's though, like it goes black and then it's like, oh, and. And, and then, yeah. do you and then wait you for your name to yeah. come up? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a nerd. I and you go, get excited Woo! about it. Yeah, yeah well, secretly. Well, <laughs> one of the biggest movies that you've just worked on, and it's crazy because we we were finding and discovering more as we were talking about things before the camera started rolling. But you just worked on The Hobbit. Yeah. And when you're still working on The Hobbit, because you're working on the third film, did you work on? I'm the hoping to, yeah. Uh, did you work on the first Hobbit movie and the second one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, definitely, always been a dream of mine. If that franchise came to life, I got to work on it, and. Uh, so yeah, I went down for the first one, got to work with you know, amazing people, was there for maybe seven months or so, got to do some pretty cool look development on the, um, near the end of the movie, like the fire, yeah. uh, the eagles, yeah. worked on a lot of that and just some other kind of cool uh, moments when they're on the carrick at the very end, the kind of emotional palette and, and, uh, and then yeah, came back down for the second one and I'm hoping to finish what I started awesome. next year. So Well, so. you you are based in, in Vancouver, yeah, that's right. but you travel to where the work is. Mm -hmm. What is it that is your specialty? Because obviously there's lots of disciplines and lots of ways in with yeah. visual effect. Yeah, there are a lot of different uh, practices. Um, yeah. I think I chase projects primarily based on what kind of a challenge it's going to give me. And I'm a compositor. So what that means is I'm putting all the layers together. Um, I'm getting assets from either from on set, their plate photography, or it's uh, elements that have been rendered, or just also other like tank elements, like they may go and shoot um, like, you know, water explosions or fire, and I have to kind of seamlessly integrate all those layers. Right. And um, that's the first challenge, but the challenge that really excites me is just kind of more look development and stylization. Look development. Hmm. That, I mean, I'm still working on my look. Yeah, keep my working. Looks not. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. How do you? Well, I don't feel well today. <laughs> yeah. It, keep working. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. It doesn't look in development. So <laughs> no, but what? How do you describe look development? I can kind of wrap my head around compositing because we've done some sure. limited visual effects with uh, some of the stuff that we've done around here. But uh, did you just do this? I, I, well, and this whole set is a green screen. This, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've done a little green screen, but we don't have green screen right now. But uh, talk um, about look development. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, like a practical example would be projects like 300 or Tron, right. where it's um, not just getting them into the same world, but it's also getting that shot into the style and the mood right. of, uh, of how the film is set. So, you know, Tron is driven by tons of different types of lens flares mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, you'll see when a different... Um, disc will go on or bike will go on. They'll, they'll each have their own kind of unique style of a flare, and it's that kind of development. Now, it's kind of neat. Many years ago, uh, I got the chance to visit a pornographic movie set. Okay. And so I learned how those movies get made. Yeah. You know, and once you know that, some of the magic is gone. And that's my question for you <laughs> is, you know so much about how all of these things are put together now that is going to the movies for you... Is it still mm, yeah. the escape that it would normally be? Or are you sitting there doing the math in your head going, oh, I know how they did that. Or how did they do that? Or is it, or, like yeah. When's the last no, time you really question. lost yourself in a movie? Well, okay, to answer that one, I'd say gravity. Okay. That was just... But you must have been but doing some of the math the in whole, your No, head the whole too. time you're yeah. sitting there really? like, okay, when do I get to breathe again? Like, it was yeah. just such a good experience. Sure. Um, and, you know, movies like Life of Pi would be another good example. It's mm. just a great story yeah. attributed, like, or uh, put together with, with uh, just exciting visuals. And it doesn't matter about the technical. I'm a pretty technical um, artist as well because there's all these different, um, 
I guess, film theory that we have to adhere to, and so there's a lot of technical basis around it. But when you're just seeing a great movie, you don't, you're not worrying about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you're going and seeing some kind of you know, generic action film, and then the bad, you know, the, the illegal things are on the screen, uh, that just will take me right out of the film for sure. When you but say illegal things, what do you mean? Well, just like you know, spill edges and like or spill um, edges. Are you like you know, these things terms are down? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or just like just just there's all sorts of kind of things that wouldn't be motivated in real life, and then they just throw them in there because it's kind of cool, and you're mm -hmm. just kind of like ah. And Wait, so you don't see dollar signs on the screen when you're watching a movie. You don't say oh, they should have they should have spent right. more here or they should have spent more there or they spent yeah. too much over there. No, that's a g another good question. I mean, uh, it's always funny the process of how these films get made because yeah. it's not like from the get-go, it's like a, a house that's been, you know, okay, we've got the blueprints, let's go. It's kind of a, a process that's changing, a moving target, if you will. So I think you can kind of tell when things have been last minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Decisions like, oh, let's add a sequence here. They may not be as you know, good, yeah. One of the, the, we live in a strange time. This is a great time for you to be doing what you do in the movies. Are you uh, saying I'm strange? Or no, you're not. Yeah. No, we, we, we all <laughs> collectively live in a strange time. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, we just, one of the movies we're watching this week, uh, it's a Blu-ray of Percy Jackson, Sea of Monsters. Now, okay, you didn't cool. work on that. No, I, I didn't, okay. but I have friends that, that did. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm watching this thing, and it feels like CG is a superpower that we have as filmmakers that we are yeah. in danger of overusing sure. at times. Yeah. Like, the movie just feels like it's one CG-generated sequence after another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not even involved in the, in the movie. I'm not even looking at what's... I'm not in awe of this stuff anymore. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, what is happening in, in your world, in the visual effects world, that you feel like sometimes maybe people, uh, filmmakers, are, are leaning a little too heavily on these things? Yeah, I think that, that definitely happens. Um, you've got a lot of movies that, uh, not to you know, knock on my own work, but like Transformers, for example, it's really exciting for me to work on because it's such a spectacle. It's just giant robots crashing through buildings and everything's on fire. and mm. it's, it's really exciting. Um, so I guess in an introspective point of view, it's okay for me because mm. I'm, not, I'm not attached to the story. I'm not going to change the story. Mm. I kind of have a story within each little shot. Yeah. So in a selfish way, I'm okay <laughs> with that. Um, but from like a moviegoer perspective, yeah, I think he, there's a lot of movies. Uh, I d yeah, I don't want to name any others, yeah, but yeah, uh, <laughs> that, that you're just like you know they're just you know launching uh, characters, uh, CG characters, underdeveloped characters everywhere, and it, it's something you'll never really buy. And then we're there's lens flares much, everywhere. Like. Yeah, we're seeing yeah. like it's become it's it's become just it's like too much frosting on the cake. It's like okay, yeah. I got I got it. I just remember I love Peter Jackson. And I love The Lord of the Rings, but that King Kong movie that he did was just like so much frosting, layer after layer yeah. after layer. And after a while, I'm like, I don't, I don't want this. I'm not in this world anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I didn't work on that project, but I, I have seen kind of where that project started. And, mm -hmm. and that's another, I think, consequence of such a big story changing so much and then just not maybe having the time. Well, I, and plus, so. I mean, we're human beings that are fascinated with technology. I mean, whether it's our everyday lives with uh, too much time on smartphones yeah. or just the, uh, it is this, this new power that we have, this ability to, to uh, uh, illustrate dreams like we've never been able to do. Good or for evil? Well, I think it's just <laughs> new right now and I think people are defining yeah. and, and determining how much to use it, and, and you see a movie like Gravity, and Quran has this ability to kind of shape effects that feel very truthful. He was very mm -hmm. much a part of Children of Men, where they just sort of disappear yeah, in the background. Totally. And Gravity again, restraint, yeah. and restraint, I think, is going to be a big part of the future of special effects. Are you getting that direction from directors that you're working with? Um, yeah, I think I think there's still, you know, like I was saying before, I'm chasing projects that are pushing right development and look right. So um, I think right now everybody's loving, you know, like a, a good example or an example where it's okay because you kind of like the movie is Star Trek and J.J. Abrams, right? Yeah. Just so many lens flares, everyone's taking a jab at that. But it doesn't necessarily bother me. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's a cool style. It's a style. But when there's other movies that don't have, they haven't set up that prestige yet yeah. and they're just throwing that everywhere, that kind of bothers me. I, I, I can't get into that, but... Is um, there a different... Uh, you know, I is it a different job apart from the end product when you work yeah. on something? Because you did, you worked on 300, and you worked on Tron Legacy, yeah. and you worked on the the last two Hobbit movies. Is it the same gig? 
or is it a totally different challenge every time when you work on these kinds of movies? Yeah, it's a totally yeah, it's a totally different challenge every time. You you know you can expect the same kind of um, ups and downs. Like you know you may work on, on a shot for a month, back and forth with a team of talented people. It's not just me working away; it's with all these other people too. Yeah. And then the director may say, "Final, this looks great." Or, well, he may just say final. He may not even say that. It looks great part. <laughs> um, and then, next thing you know, three days later, it's actually omitted from the movie. Mm -hmm. oh, so man. it's like you, that type of stuff. Yeah, I'm, I know to expect that type of stuff now. I know to expect that you may be working uh, 100 hours a week. Um, so those types of things aren't surprises anymore. Just to clarify, he just said 100 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. And we talked about this before we started rolling today. And I had to do some math to figure out if there were actually... Yeah, 100 hours in a week, yep. and there, there, are, yeah. there are a few more than that, but almost not more than 100 hours a week. W when do you find time to poop? <laughs> Come on. They, yeah, they've got you and your they poop have, they have craft services. Oh, okay. Um, they, <laughs> they take care of all of that. Yeah, um, but a couple records I've set, like, for, well, for myself, was, uh, they're not definitely something I'm proud of, but 110 hours was the most I did yeah. in one week. Your family's probably not happy to hear about these records. It's just yeah. cheering at home. Woo, yeah, you yeah, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> 110 hour a week. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I did a, uh, a 36 hour shift one time. Nice. So just you're at your best, I find, when you're yeah, in that yeah. 35th to 36th hour. That's, yeah, that's when it's it your kicks strongest in. work. This is 37, a though? Third hour today. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're going to go home soon. No, uh, <laughs> so, the, uh, you know, I, having actor friends, Vic, Vic was an actor before he got into this. Uh, one million years ago. Border yeah. town, right? Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sometimes, you know, when you're an actor, you just, you do your part on a project and then you don't know what's going to happen to the sure, project, yeah. how it's all going to come together. I mean, there must be moments for you as, as a compositor, as a visual effects artist, yeah. where projects really dovetail and become more than you thought they were going to be. And, and I'm sure the opposite is probably true sometimes. Yeah, an uh, interesting uh, parallel would be, I'll do my work, but mm -hmm. then it, once I'm done, it goes into a DI, which is a di digital intermediate, and that's where they grade the whole film and they may set more of a, a tone um, but what's becoming more and more popular or uh, well not popular but something that's happening is that we're actually providing mats that we're calling them so you know I'd provide a red channel for me green channel for you blue channel for you and then give that to the DI house wi along with the final shot so then they're free to actually regrade everything that we've done. So you're talking about color timing and sort of yeah. giving the film another look after you've yeah. so I've already kind of, worked on a look. I kind of polished that, yeah. or so I thought, and then I've, I've gone to see some films and, and then been like, whoa, that looks so different than what I mm -hmm. set Ouch. up. And, and so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the core things I built in there are obviously still the same, yeah. but there's just like a, a new treatment over it. So, yeah. Do you think yeah. that this is a consequence of... Uh, uh, you know, decades of, of um, categories and, and too, much, too many thumbprints on these films as they've come to market. Uh, and what digital technology allows people to do is, is, you know, maybe cut down on some of the necessary manpower in order to get these, these films get made. We'll fix it in post. But there's still too yeah. many people involved and they all got to sort of to well, be cooks in the kitchen, kind of. No, to a, to a certain degree, it all kind of services that greater good of like right. gives the director what he wants, right? right. So he, if it, does that mean he's going to have to come back to me and have me re-render, and it's going to go through internal iterations? It's kind of a slower turnaround process. Yeah. Or is he can just sit there in the theater with the guy and kind of just just retweak it all? Right. Obviously, I don't like it, but it's yeah. like uh, it make, it makes sense. It's a good thing. It's a positive thing. So you've worked on uh, was it Transformers that you worked on? Yeah. And you worked on Harry Potter. Yeah. Worked on Three Hundred. Worked on The Hobbit, worked on Thor 2, you worked on Iron Man. Yeah. I mean... It's, and actually, uh, also Superman. And the, so those, that's kind of get left me with which some really Which Man of Steel? Halloween. No, the... Um, oh, Superman Returns. Returns. yeah. Crazy. So some great Halloween costumes. <laughs> and last I mean, year, that, yeah. That's like almost every huge geek movie in the last 10 years, it feels like. Yeah, I kind of chase, chase them down. Well, we, when we were talking about this before we started, Game of Thrones, you're doing a oh, little work on that uh, yeah. right now. And, yeah, super and, one of, and this on is that. one of the big questions that I have, and it's one of the things we run into being on you know, the production mm -hmm. side of things. Is yeah. like I love Game of Thrones as much as I love yeah. anything. As much as I love Victor, I love Game of Thrones. That's nice. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm, from working on the project, you're not going to be able to just consume it like a normal person. You're going to, you, right. you yeah. know totally things. Totally true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's, you know, it, but it is also exciting to be, you you're know, a part of that. You're one of the guys. Yeah. Yeah. Process. So, yeah, there's definitely, I'm, I'm privy to some things that 
uh, you know, everyone in the office were like, no. Were you tempted right, yeah. to, uh, to, to say no? It just like, I just want to. No, I wanted to work on okay. it. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Do you want to put your thumb? It was a stupid things. question. Yeah. Totally. Is, is, there, <laughs> is there something that you've worked on so, f- you know, so far in your career that you're especially proud of that you think kind of best exemplifies why you got into this business? Um, yeah, I mean, I think 300 was that first project for me. I mean, at the same time, I could say The Hobbit because that's my, my dream project and I'm kind of sacrificing a lot to, to make that happen. And, um, but yeah, I say 300 was the first time I really got to be, uh, more of a, you know, part of this creative process as opposed to like the technician aspect of what I do, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, okay, that's this element, that's this, make it work. All right, now run through 50 of those. Um, so with that project, you know, it was a lot of abstract style. Like, you know, they may have shot, uh, you know, the lighting source here. So technically in the background, we would want to match that to make it look photoreal. But, you know, we'd get notes from the client all the time saying, oh, just add another sun, it will look cool. Like it didn't matter. And it right. was just all about what could make a cool lens flare. What right. could, you know, how far could you shoot the blood? Like that kind of stuff. So it was kind of fun. And who's the client? Is that Zack Snyder? Yeah, essentially. But yeah. more for me, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, insulated from that. So it'd yeah. be more like my supervisors internally. And okay. Now, I just want to say that at the outset, I love Steven Spielberg. Love him almost as much as I love Vic. <laughs> yeah. And I love George Lucas. But one question I've always, I've never really talked to anybody like you before. And so yeah. I'm fascinated. Um, you look at Star Wars from 1977. Sure. And the special effects in that movie are ageless. I mean, it looks a little dated when it comes to some of the costumes and the yeah. film stock and stuff like that. But the special effects are so credible and convincing. And that was about a thousand years ago. We yeah. weren't even born yeah. then, none of yeah. us. And, uh, and then you look at something like Jurassic Park, which we, we just talked about, which mm-hmm. is coming up on its, what, 25th or 30th anniversary? The 20th anniversary, yeah. And that probably came out, what, 20, 25 years after Star Wars? Yeah. Jesus, how old are we? And uh, the the special (laughs) effects in Jurassic Park were such a huge part of why people wanted to go see that movie. Yeah. But if you look at the movie now, those effects aren't aging as well as the Star Wars effects, in my opinion. Lots of people might disagree. What determines how well or how poorly an effect will age? And is that something you guys are aware of in your process? Yeah, I mean, I think that's um, a, a big part of that would be knowing and understanding the film theory, like what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. There's just all these different uh, things to understand how, you know, film and color space gets processed and how we are going to take digital images and make it kind of fit into that space. And one thing that maybe, you know, to attest to how good the Star Wars effects are is that everything was done optically, Mm -hmm. so it wasn't actually digital. So um, that that has something going for it. But it's the process to do it. I mean, they're literally cutting up film strips and and, and taping them and together, taping and together, shooting and them again, and yeah, yeah. it's a crazy process that um, 115 you're, you're hour weeks. Oh yeah, back then, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's 110 <laughs> hour weeks can suck it. <laughs> yeah, and that's the start of the show probably. Yeah. And yeah, so it's kind of it's like uh, it's hard to quantify what really makes something real looking, especially when you talk about like an animated face, you know, like that whole well, and debate plus about that. But we look at Star Wars through the rose-colored glasses of nostalgia. And we yeah. are I- 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 almost in a, uh, a, a by or a weekly sense becoming more sophisticated with our understanding of what digital effects are and, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and visual effects can be in, in the modern age. I mean, every commercial, every television show. I mean, Game of Thrones wouldn't have been possible 20 years ago. Yeah, totally. Really? Yeah. But it, no. It's no. A, totally. It's As a TV series? Yeah. But it's, it's kind of an ongoing conversation yeah. in every movie. I mean, everything we see, it's, it's, part, it's, a, it's a prevalent topic, and that is, oh, that, looks like, that looked real, or that was totally mm-hmm. convincing. And, that, yeah. and that, wasn't, that wasn't a conversation we were having 30 years ago I either. Think, I think something know? like Tron Legacy or 300, I think, uh, also sidesteps that a little bit by taking yeah. these creative choices. Is that more appealing? For you, as a, as a as yeah. a visual artist, to, to I think so. For what what my uh, niche skill set is, yeah, it's because yeah. I get to make I get to try and make things look cool. Yeah, I don't I don't have to make things look real. I get, I get to make them look Hollywood real, or yeah. I get to make them you know look neat, or or pull on this certain nostalgic things, or you know tricks that um, that make each shot like its own little kind of story. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. obviously compositing is an incredibly important skill set in uh, visual effects. Or in the, in, yeah. it, it, would you confine it to visual effects? Or is yeah, it, visual effects. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is this something that, uh, 
you, you know, a lot of students are kind of gravitating towards? Is, is compositing a big pull uh, in a sort of an, well, as an educational that's, part? That's what I wanted to ask him. Is yeah. Yeah. Tell us your origin story. There are a lot of people out there who are yeah. wondering how they could get to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And do they, do, you went to school and, and sure. you, you got lucky here and there. Well, and you worked really he's hard. He's a specialist if they're flying them all over the work, world to work on <laughs> these huge, mm -hmm. the biggest projects in the world pretty much, right? Yeah, it's, it's cool that they'll, you know, I, I want to work on them. I'm happy that yeah. they'll that they'll bring me there to work on them. So, so are, are, there, are there only two of you in the industry? Like, <laughs> <laughs> No, on, like to, for an example, on the second Hobbit, yeah. there was just, I think just shy of 150 just compositors. So okay. that, and that's huge. Like Jesus. there's some companies that are just that size in yeah. total, not just for one department. Right. And there's maybe 12 departments. So wow. it's, you know, over a thousand people to make something so big. But to go back to the, the origin story, um, it's kind of a funny one um, for me because I, I was fortunate enough to go to a school that actually we were doing like news, bro news bro broadcasting and animation. There, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a, yeah. a little so bit of a Freudian a uh, slip there. But <laughs> it's, it was cool because I got to, I was doing this stuff at like when I was 14. Right. And just kind of with no repercussions or no understanding what do you of that. You were doing it when you were 14. How were you doing it? You went to you school. Just at when home you were and, and at school. No, it, in high school, I was doing all this stuff. In high school, you yeah. were doing so this at, stuff. At 16, he was working on 300 with Zach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when That's did you amazing. know? You, I mean, there must have been a point earlier when you you were like, "This is what I want to do with my life." And when when was that moment? Yeah, I didn't expect to talk about this, but um, yeah, I get the whole story, I guess, to keep it kind of quick, was you know, Photoshop, right? You Photoshop is compositing just yeah. on a single frame basis, no, you know, no uh, multiple frames and no video, and I loved it. I had so much fun. And I, I, I remember talking to my dad saying, hey, I want to go to this art school in, in Burnaby called CDIS. It's a, it was a pretty small school. Burnaby's just a, it's an outskirt of uh, Vancouver here. Yeah, yeah, and a relatively small school, unrecognized. And um, just saying, you know, I, I, really, I think I really want to do this. But in the back of my head thinking, okay, I'm committing to living in my parents' basement until I'm 30 <laughs> because I don't know, I thought it was a great thing I could chase, you know, kind of like, oh, I want to be a musician, right? But it's, I didn't think it would ever be anything, um, you know, that would actually give me a livelihood for my family. Right. And uh, so I'm pretty, I think that's where I'm fortunate, you know, to, to bring up luck. Like, I think that's the lucky part for me is that, you know, there's so many creative um, pursuits, but I'm just very fortunate that that mm. actually became a, a job. My first job, though, I was working, you know, those kind of hundred-hour weeks. Yeah. I had no overtime pay. I had to ask to get paid and not be uh, <laughs> volunteer. And yeah, I did the math, and so I would have made more money working at McDonald's on my right. first mm. gig, right? So it's kind of it's and what really were those about first passion. Gigs? Um, it would that would be like uh, Stargate and Kingdom Hospital, right? A couple other, yeah, TV local TV shows. So you you ride the rungs of the ladder and you work from Stargate and then eventually you find yourself in the company of Peter Jackson and, and Zack Snyder. It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. I mean, what do you do? You get an agent? How do you get, how do you get work like that? Yeah, the, I, it's a good, it's a good question. I think a lot of it is, it's kind of this organic process of the industry being, you know, hired guns. Yeah. So it just kind of naturally happens that way because companies can't really keep a, you know, a staff. It gets, it's hard to manage. You know, let's say a company loses some work and then there's all the staff there. So they, they typically hire on a project basis. So what that means is that at the end of each project, it's up to you to say, you know what, I'm going to be, I don't want to use the word like complacent, but I'm, I'm just fine to stay and take the next show. Or you can actually go and relook, hey, what's going on? What's next? Right. And I kind of always wanted to chase certain shows. Um, but yeah, no, I guess there's this natural progression of you're an artist, and then so then that, you know, you're you figured something out. Okay, you should help other people figure that out. Okay, now you should manage. And so I kind of that was kind of a process that happened. And then you, and then I kind of, I'm torn between what I what I prefer, if it's managing or or if it's just getting to you know take directions and problem solve how to get a look. Right. So when you're doing those two things, you just meet so many people. Awesome. And, um, and I guess if you're yeah. doing managing of a staff and also working on specific uh, problems, you're actually yeah. becoming the best in both, right? Because you're able to pass on information that you're constantly learning. Yeah, and you and you and you learn your strengths, right? Right. And that's my my story too, right? Like you know, you asked why uh, earlier if I didn't go to law school or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's like I know 
you know, I think everyone has a full deck of cards, and I just kind of had one card, one yeah. good card, yeah. as opposed to like a full round. That's what all so successful I, people yeah, say. Right. They're like, I had no yeah. other choice except yeah. to be like, I'm awesome at this one thing. Yeah, yeah I don't so think if, that's if I went, true. if You're I went into, dude. A, you could have done anything. I don't think so, man. If I if I did the the route of trying it all and then, you know, right. uh, I think there would have been so many downfalls. And I, I my dad's always said specialize and I is took that, that to heart. Is that what you say to, uh, to people that are, you know, artists right now that are thinking about getting into visual effects or working in the game industry or whatever, it's, it's kind of find, yeah. Find, yeah, totally. find something that you're going to specialize in and love yeah. and make that your business. Totally, yeah. And like, I guess you also have to be a business person as well. It sounds like that's part of your philosophy to, as well. Yeah, Except to a certain degree. Twitter, so yeah, got to get Twitter. <laughs> get, get on this Twitter. <laughs> I tweeted once. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's important to know the, the business side of it, just to just to be realistic, right? Like, yeah. there's so many uh, variables that make it possible for us to do something or to not do something, and it's important to understand why, you know, why the client's going to omit that shot or why the those certain things happen, or yeah. Is, so, is it all Hobbit for you for the rest of the year? What's next for you? Um, yeah, I'm working on Game of Thrones right now, yeah. which I'm really excited about. Yeah. And then um, everybody on dies on season four. Yeah, yeah there's no yeah, more other seasons dead. ever. Just no, Tyrion I, at the end of it. <laughs> it's Ned Stark's ghost. It's just Tyrion and a dragon. <laughs> yeah, riding well, I had one dragon. question yeah. for him. Uh, yeah. Now 3D has become a thing. It's kind of come yeah. and gone, and it goes away, but it never quite goes all the way away. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. has that affected or changed what you do? For on the day-to-day -day, um, tasks, it, there's kind of this misconception like. Because I guess kind of layman's terms of what stereo is, it's us pr um, showing two images with kind of just su subtly different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of the hardware, uh, you know, sending those different images to your different eyes, cheating depth, right? Um, so, yeah, to, in a lot of ways it's misconceived as, oh, you just have to cr do it twice. But it's actually way more work than that because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to see behind something else, you have to create all that content. It's not like... Mm. So there's just all these other repercussions and in visual effects. Yeah, only specifically. Yeah, yeah it'll yeah. make my job exponentially harder. Right. So I, I personally don't. You know, I won't chase out stereo projects um, or three D projects. But I think films like Gravity, you gotta, you gotta see it in three D. Yeah. You know, and and I think, um, which wasn't shot in three D. They couldn't shoot it in three D because yeah. they were in totally confined space. But so much they, of it was. Digital, yes. uh, digitally rendered. I thought that. they shot it in outer space. No, they did not shoot it in outer space. Very convincing, very convincing. <laughs> so you don't you don't look for the three D stuff if you can avoid it. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm I just like a good problem to solve. That's yeah. kind of my job, I guess. If you yeah, yeah, yeah. put it down to its uh, simplest form, but so that is also a fun. Like you know, Hobbit is uh, stereo and high mm -hmm. frame rate. So it's right. twice as many frames I'm wow. working on and it's twi double like. But it's the Hobbit, it's so Peter Jackson. Yeah, so give me the yeah. challenge, right? Yeah. I'm up for it. Um, but yeah, on the on the day-to-day -day stuff, there's some things you just can't do in, in 3D. Like, you know, you can't just shoot a smoke element and throw it in the corner and make it look cool. It, it actually has to have depth in it now too. So there's limitations to the tricks. And how, so. how many people in the world, Chris, you think are saying, I'm gonna wrap up on Game of Thrones and then I'm gonna go work on the Hobbit? <laughs> uh, I think I know a couple. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. But maybe yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's really cool. That's really oh, cool. Oh, thank you. Appreciate so, it. Tell us before you go uh, what's happening with Spark. Why, why should people go? And anybody can go to this thing. It's they a Vancouver-based yep. event. Yeah. And are you speaking at Spark? No, I've, I've spoken in the past. Okay. Uh, but what, what is it? What is but it? Yeah, it's, it's a really cool conference. It's five days, and I guess you could break it up into three things. Yeah. It's um, a film festival, so that's totally open to everybody. Yeah. And they're going to be um, presenting uh, classics and, and present movies right. with the latest projectors. Uh, Christy and the Stereo 3D awesome. uh, Center at Emily Carr are coming together to sponsor this projector. And uh, so you're going to be able to go see Wizard of Oz 3D in like the, you know, the greatest projector you could see it in. So That's incredible. And that's going to be going on throughout the whole festival. And then there's a job fair. So if you want to Get into visual effects, or if you want to protect your free time, what's so your choice? But yeah, so if you go to uh, the job fair, you'll work on Game of Thrones and then The Hobbit. Yeah, exactly. Right. Done. Okay, that's yeah. that's all you got to do. And yeah. then and then the bigger part of that is the um, are the lectures, and okay. that's and that's uh, pretty much the top people in our industry um, showing the latest advancements in visual effects. So we're going to have 
there's going to be ILM uh, is coming, uh, Weta is coming, and they're all going to be sh breaking down all the visual effects that they did. Some of them are going to be seamless effects, like from Gatsby, they're going to be showing that kind of stuff. Cool. And then some of them are, you know, Pacific Rim, which is like just total visual effects overload. That was and candy, gonna, yeah. Yeah, show all that kind of stuff. And, and there's two other interesting talks that, that I'm really excited about. One is the guy who owns the, I, I totally forgot his name. <laughs> I'm terrible with that stuff, but uh, who owns the rights to Batman. Oh, that's Michael Uslin. I'm going to that. Yeah, yeah, go to that. That's cool. And yeah. So he's going to talk about that history. So he'll be right up front. I, I will be there. Executive producer, yeah. So yeah. that's really neat. Yeah. Uh, and then the other is the 20th anniversary of Jurassic Park. The VFX soups are going to be coming up here. And talking about Ash down it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you can just ask some questions. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, sir. Why are the, why are the effects the, so bad? The, these yeah. dinosaurs don't look real. <laughs> Excuse me. Not objectively no, speaking, but why is it bad? <laughs> <laughs> Why is uh, Jeff Goldblum in this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, we're getting the uh, wrap-up sign. A, a quick question before, before yeah. we shut it down. Usually yeah. when we have a guest on the show, we ask them to recommend something. I'm blindsiding you with this. All a right. TV All show right. or a movie that you saw recently or something out that, there. That you didn't work media on. That, so that you didn't necessarily That limits on, it down to about three things. That you're in love with right yeah. now and that you want to recommend to viewers. And I know you got a sick child at home and, and, uh, and you got a lot going on in your life. You can recommend weeks. Dora the Explorer if you want. Yeah, I was going to say Miffy. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that? Not yet, no. So like a, the Dutch uh, rabbit. My son loves it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Miffy. That's yeah. Chris Van Dyke. Check, Woo! Out, yeah. check out Miffy. <laughs> yeah. um, but maybe on a more relevant... I don't. I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. Yeah, nothing's coming to mind. Um, what about you? You got anything? 110 hour work weeks. That's what. Oh. Try it out. Yeah. Doesn't leave a lot of time to watch. You make me work about seven hours. Consume. It's a lot. So, do you play video games? That's it. No, you know, I used to. Yeah. I, I still. I was saying before, I still play Counter Strike, which yeah. is fun. Well, then recommend yeah. Counter Strike. Um, if you haven't played Counter Strike. Okay. I okay. I do have one. I I uh, have a, I had an Xbox sitting around, never turned it on, and uh, someone lent me Batman. Uh, Arkham, Arkham Asylum, yeah. yeah, and I've just been ripping through the, that franchise. That's that's a lot of fun. Best so franchise fun. of the last gen, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, Chris. That. Awesome to have yeah. you, man. Thanks for having me. Continued Thanks, success. Man. Thank you. I, I think you're gonna go places. <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. That was great. Bravo.